Hello and welcome to this course on model predictive control. We are in week number 12 of this course. Uh, this is the last week. Uh, what I have decided to do in this week is to uh, uh, you know address some of the uh, interesting issues in model predictive control as well as uh, to address some of the queries that uh, several of you have been asking in the past 11 weeks. Okay, uh, so the content of this particular week will not be there for for the exam, the final exam that uh, you would be writing. The, uh, however, uh, this is going to be something that would uh, I would intend to tie up the entire course together. Okay, so in this particular lecture, I'm just going to recap the uh, linear quadratic control and linear MPC, the, the things that we have been doing from week number seven onwards. Okay. So let's get started with that. Okay, so week number seven, we started with discussing state space models, the uh, in general linear time invariant models we have discussed in week number three and four interconversion between various models, but week number seven onwards, we are focused on state space models. Okay, when we talked about state space models, we spoke about uh, the stability. Okay, we distinguished asymptotic stability from bounded input bounded output stability and for the most part uh, we focused on the asymptotic stability of the system and then uh, uh, depending on the eigenvalues of a matrix the system can be classified either as stable marginally so asymptotically stable marginally stable and unstable. Thereafter we talked about the concepts of observability. and controllability okay these are very important concepts uh, observability depends on the matrices a and c of the state space model controllability depends on the matrices a and b of the state space model and for both observability and controllability we looked at two different conditions the Houtus condition uh, which is a minus lambda i comma b or uh, uh, c followed by a, uh, a minus lambda i. Uh, so that's the Houtus condition. The other condition is based on observability or controllability matrix, also known as observability gramium or controllability gramium. Okay. So it's a rank condition based on the matrix that we uh, construct. So uh, these actually ask the question whether or not even it is possible to estimate uh, the initial state from just from the measurements and whether it is possible to have uh, input moves so that the system can be taken from any arbitrary state to the origin in finite amount of time. Uh, corresponding concepts are detectability and stabilizability which uh, talk about whether or not it would be taken to, this, uh, to the place in infinite amount of time. Thereafter, we talked uh, about LQR and uh, Kalman filter. And in this case, for LQR, we had a mo uh, model of the type AXK um, plus BUK. Okay, and we said that the information is known perfectly. That means there's no error in the model. We know all of the information perfectly. We know the initial state perfectly and the entire state is uh, being measured. And based on these assumptions, the question that we ask is how can we may do optimal linear control? Thereafter, when it comes to Kalman filter, we said that, uh, you know what, there are going to be uh, some errors in the overall system. And let's say that the errors in the overall system are of additive type, okay, and uh, epsilon is state noise and new, we said would be output noise or measurement noise. And we let's say if that's the case, then Kalman filter spoke about whether from the measurements we can then calculate what the initial state was or we can correct the estimates of the states okay so that was what Kalman filter talked about and LQG for linear systems with additive Gaussian noises LQG follows separation principle which basically means that independently you can develop LQR, independently you can develop Kalman filter and together LQR plus Kalman filter becomes a closed loop optimal controller. 
okay that's what we uh, talked about in week number 8 uh, and 9 and in week number 10 uh, of course the first first lecture we uh, introduced you to lqg but thereafter we spent time to talk about practical cases in lqg uh, for example uh, if there is a disturbance or if we need to track a set point Okay, in either cases, you require an appropriate state augmentation. In order to do uh, the LQG, okay, uh, again, LQG, the idea of LQG, it solves a regulatory problem, which means that you can take the system from any arbit arbitrary point uh, to the origin. And if you have a set point tracking problem, you reformulate it in type in these terms. Okay, and that's what uh, we, we talked about. But real intent for us to talk about LQG was so that it leads up very now uh, nicely into the state space MPC. And in the state space MPC, we spoke about the model XK plus one equal to AXK plus BUK and yk equal to cxk and the uh, optimization of uh, uh, was based on y minus set point okay and this we stumped summed over the entire horizon i k plus i and y k plus i but we also had a regulation term and that was i equal to 0 to m minus 1 delta u k plus i transpose r delta u k plus i okay and why do we have to penalize the input rate this is the input rate penalty the reason we penalize input rate penalty is because uh, we want to ensure that the system reaches uh, its desired set point okay uh, you can also uh, penalize the inputs itself but that's not the standard formulation for state space mpc okay now this is this uh, most simplest case and which is not of a very large practical relevance okay what is of practical relevance is to be able to address pd multiplied by dk this takes care of uh, measured disturbances and to take care of unmeasured disturbances be multiplied by ek or we can write that as be multiplied by let's say wk okay now this disturbance can be added in the state or this disturbance can be added in the measurement okay and it would be appropriate to add this particular noise in either of these two places okay and then we Will, I will end this lecture to talk about the equivalence between DMC and state space MPC and I have talked about this as, at multiple times in week number 5 and 6 itself I, we have uh, briefly discussed this as well as in the previous week I have discussed equivalence between uh, DMC and state space MPC okay uh, the first thing is that the DMC you have the model of the form yk plus 1 Okay, so this is the model that you have in DMC, whereas the model that we have in state space MPC is XK plus 1. Okay, so this is the model in uh, state space MPC. And then we talked about the rate based formulation where you can difference it and augment it in order to make the uh, state space form very similar to the DMC form as well. Okay, so that was one part. This is caters to the state definition. 
okay and then when it came to dmc we also developed a uh, multi step prediction equation and the multi step prediction equation And then in order to have bias correction in case of model plant mismatch, we had one more term, okay, where EK was nothing but the difference between Y measured and the Y model, okay, so Y from the plant and Y from the model, okay. Likewise, we also have multi-step prediction equation in uh, uh, state space MPC and the state space MPC the multi-step prediction equation is of the form yp k plus 1 at k equal to sx xk plus su oops delta umk same as here plus sd delta dk okay and then we have to have some kind of a correction and this correction is based on the overall uh, disturbance model and that i can write this as se multiplied by wk where wk would in general be a stochastic system okay and how do we take care of this we will take care of this through disturbance modeling Okay, and again, I realized from the feedback of uh, from students in the last uh, uh, couple of weeks is this particular concept of how do we use disturbance modeling in order to ensure offset free MPC is something that was not uh, not fully clear. Uh, there have been questions uh, about how do we address uh, you know uh, things like. building an integral action what i meant by building an integral action is really to use disturbance modeling in order to op ensure offset free mpc okay so doing the offset free mpc would be something that i'm going to talk about next thereafter i'm going to talk about some of the practical cases such as inferential control nonlinear uh, uh, control and so on and thereafter i will talk about certain con uh, open research problems that people are looking at currently Okay. With that, I come to the end of this lecture. Just to recap the thing that I had said uh, right in the beginning, that the content of this particular module per se are not something that I will hold you responsible for the exam. Okay. However, we will have an assignment at the end of this week that you will need to complete. Okay. So with that, I come to the end of this lecture. Thanks.